Okay, chapter 1.2, transformations of linear and absolute value functions. The essential question for this chapter section is, how do the graphs of y equals f of x plus k being a constant, y equals f of the quantity x minus h, and y equals negative f of x, compare to the graph of the parent function f? What you will learn in this chapter is to write functions representing translations and reflections, write functions representing stretches and shrinks, write functions representing combinations and transformations. Okay, example one, writing translations of functions. So we're given a function f of x and it's two x plus one. And you should always ask yourself, what kind of function is that self? Self, what is this? Well, x is to the power of one. So therefore that tells me it's linear. It has a slope of two and a y-intercept of one. Can you picture that? Go up one on the y-axis, put a dot, go up two over one, up two over one, up two over one. Recall that from algebra one, that is a linear function. So over here on the side, I have a list of how to do math problems. So there are four steps. Step one is write the formula. Step two is substitute the givens. Step three is simplify and solve. And step four, always ask yourself, does your answer make sense or check your answer? Okay, I say this to all of my students, regardless of what course it is, math six, math seven, math eight, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, calculus, AP calculus, it doesn't matter. Statistics, you always do these four steps when answering the question. Okay, so A says, write a function, I'll use blue, write a function G, whose graph is a translation three units down of the graph F. So I'm going to highlight the important information here. We're writing a function G. And its graph is a translation three units down of f. So when I do this, I have an idea of what they're asking for. We want to call the function g. So for starters, I'm going to call it g of x. And it's going to equal some translation of f of x. And it's three units down. So if I go back to the first page here, and that is this right here. Up, down, translations is when you add or subtract a constant to a function at the end. That's up, down, translation. So that's what we're doing, f of x plus a constant. So f of x plus and three units down, that would be negative three. Okay, so there's my function written. The formula is the new function equal to the old function, and then we are doing what our translation says to do. And now we're going to simplify. And f of x, that's substituting our givens. f of x is f of x equals 2x plus 1. So whenever we have something equal to something else, we can always substitute it in. So I can take this full 2x plus 1 and replace f of x with it. So it's going to go where f of x is. So that's my substitution. So I'm going to put 2x plus 1 and then plus negative three. So I did my substitution. Substitute the givens, f of x is two x plus one. And then this comes after. Okay, and then, so therefore then we simplify that. We substitute the givens, now we're simplifying and solving. Well, one plus a negative three is negative two, and this two x is not a like term, so it just comes down two x, and one plus a negative three is minus two. Okay, so there's the answer to that. But step four is, does my answer make sense in the context of the problem? How could we check that? Well, we could graph it. I'm not going to graph it right now, but you could graph it. All I have to do is look and say, okay, a translation of a line three units down, the slope is not going to change and my slope is still two. My y-intercept is going to decrease by three and that did happen. So I am analyzing my solution and it does make sense to me. So let's move on to the next problem. Go back to highlight, purple. We're going to write a function h whose graph is a translation two units to the left of the graph of f. Okay, so I'm gonna switch back to my pen. So I'm going to write the function h of x equals, okay, f of, now I'm going back to page one. This is the, this is this scenario. Whenever you are moving left and right, 
okay, horizontal translations, it's this formula, F of X minus H inside the parentheses. So we're changing the X value of what we're substituting into the function inside the parentheses, okay? So it's the internal transformation. So now I'm gonna write F of X, two units to the left is minus two. Okay, so there's my function f of x minus two. Now I'm going to substitute in the givens. Uh, f of x equals two x plus one. So now I'm going to type in or write in at h of x equals, and instead of f of x minus two, I'm going to substitute in what f of x is and go from there. Okay, and if you notice, I paused there for a second because I was questioning what I was saying. It didn't make sense. So I, it's not f of x minus 2. It's minus a negative 2, okay? Two units to the left. Left is minus 2, and it's 8x minus h, and my h is negative 2. So I just needed to fix that right there. So now it's f of x minus a negative 2, and then I'm going to simplify that, and that's going to be f of x plus 2. Minus a negative is plus two units to the left, left is opposite inside the parentheses. And that's where I caught myself. So X, now H of X is going to equal, and now I'm going to substitute in the F of X plus two. So wherever I see an X, I'm going to put X plus two. So F of X is this thing here, but I want to add two to the X. So substituting in F of X will give me two. And instead of X, I'm replacing the X with X plus two. Here is an X right here. Instead of putting x, I'm going to put x plus 2, and then the plus 1 follows outside. So all I did was replaced f of x with x plus 2 and then substitute it. So now I'm going to simplify this, and actually there's no more simplifying to do. I cannot add this 2 and this 1 because they're doing different things. This moves it left, this moves it up, this stretches it. So I simplified that is the answer to my question, or is it? Can I then distribute? That's what we wanna do here. So since this two is outside, I can now do the distributive property. Okay, so H of X is going to equal two times X is two X. Two times two is four. And then this plus one is tagging along. And now I can add the four and the one. So h of x is going to simplify to 2x plus 5. So this linear function, translating it two units to the left, is actually going to raise it up from 1 to 4. And if I graph these, let's do that in Desmos, and just so I can show you. OK, so let's graph the parent function first f of x equals 2x plus 1. So if I go to Desmos and write f of x equals 2x plus 1. Okay, so there's our original f of x function in red. Okay, f of x equals 2x plus 1. Now we're going to graph the translated function which is h of x equals 2x plus 5. OK, so there's my blue line. That's my translated function. Now, if I go back here, it was supposed to be a translation two units to the left. So if I go back to my graph, and I look at this, and I pick a point right here, that is the point zero, one. Two units to the left is negative two, one. So going from zero to negative two is two units to the left. Okay, so that does make sense. So there I checked it. Okay, example one was transforming linear functions. Now we're doing absolute value functions. So example two says writing reflections of functions. So now we're going to use an absolute value function to reflect. 
Okay, so let me switch to my highlighter. And it says, let f of x equal the absolute value of x plus 3 plus 1. Write a function g whose graph is a reflection in the x-axis of the graph of f. Okay, so let's just think about that a second. If we have a coordinate plane and there's something up here, an absolute value, we're going to reflect it across x. So what's that going to do is going to flip it over the x-axis and reflect down. Okay, so that's what I'm thinking in my head when I look at this. And now let's take a look at it. So it says write a function. So step one is write the formula. So I'm going to say g of x. This is part A, by the way. g of x equals negative f of x. Okay, a reflection just means to negate the whole function. So if I go back to page one, now we're doing this right here. Okay, this one right here. Y equals negative f of x will reflect. Okay, so here we go. G of x equals negative f of x. Write the formula. Substitute the givens. G of x equals, and I'm going to negate this whole thing. So it's going to be the negative of the whole thing. Absolute value x plus 3 plus 1. These are my absolute values right here, by the way. Make them a little darker so they don't look like 1s. Okay, so now we're going to distribute this negative to each piece. There's two components. There's the absolute value portion, and there's the constant. So I'm going to substitute those in, or I'm going to distribute a negative 1. So negative 1 times that is going to equal a negative absolute value x plus 3. Okay, it doesn't get distributed inside the brackets. It's just negating the absolute value function. And then this negative goes out to this positive one. Negative, think of this as negative one out here. Negative one times a positive one is negative one. So now I have the negative absolute value x plus three minus one. Okay. So now I'm going to check it. And let's use Desmos again to check these. So my original is the absolute value of x plus three plus one. So if I go into Desmos, where is it? Right here. And let's delete all and start over. And what did we call it? F of x equals x plus three plus one. So I'm gonna write F of x equals the absolute value of x plus three. And the original was also plus one. Okay, so the plus three moved it left three, and the plus one moved it up one. So there's my graph of my original parent function, or not parent function, my original function f of x. Shifted left three, up one. And now we're going to reflect it across the x-axis, and we're going to hopefully get that to look just like it on the other side of the x-axis, flip down, using this. So g of x equals the negative. So I'm going to write g of x equals the negative absolute value x plus 3 minus 1. Okay. So as you can see, this point, we went from, let me zoom in a little so you see the one, one. So the point negative three, one became negative three, negative one. We flipped it. This point right here is negative two, two, and it reflected over to negative two, negative two. Okay, so that's a reflection across the x-axis. Now let's do the next one. I'll use green this time. Now part B says, write a function H. Highlighter, green. Write a function H whose graph is a reflection in the Y axis of the graph of F. Okay, so write the formula. H of X 
equals and what is a reflection in the y axis going to do? Okay, let me go back to Desmos to explain this. If I am right here, okay, at this point right here, one, one, and I want to reflect across the y axis, I'm at negative one, one. So what changed? The x, the value we're plugging into the function, which is our x, our, our independent variable, x is going to get negated. So all we're doing is making x negative when we're reflecting across the y-axis. So in order to do this, I'm going to say h of x equals f of negative x. That is a reflection across the y. Out front is a reflection across the x. Okay? So h of x is now going to equal this negated. So that means that the x is going to get negated. So it's going to equal the absolute value of negative x plus 3 plus 1. OK, these are absolute values here. Let me make them a little darker. So the absolute value of negative x plus 3 plus 1. Now we want to factor out that negative 1. And in order to do so, I'm going to move it outside of the absolute values and think of it as this. How do I get a negative one outside when there's a negative inside? I multiply it by negative one. So this is going to now become positive one. So if I distribute this, negative one times x will give me negative x. And this is going to become minus three. Negative times a negative is positive, And it's not going to change what's outside, which is plus one. Okay, so now I have h of x equals negative the quantity x minus 3 plus 1. Okay, and that is what we're going to graph, and we'll see if we get the right. Okay, there's one thing I didn't mention here when I bring this negative out. So let me just fix this right here. If I'm going to factor out a negative one, it's still absolute value. So if I take out an absolute value of negative one and multiply it by the absolute value of negative x plus three, I should show my work. I tried skipping a step and I made a mistake, so don't do that. So we're factoring out, we're getting this x to be positive. We're gonna factor out a negative. And when I do that, that's gonna make this positive and this negative, okay? So let me just erase that. I just wanted to show you what, what was just happening there. I don't need a plus in front of a positive, And this is going to become negative. So if I factor out the absolute value of negative 1 outside, multiply it by the absolute value of the opposite of what it was. Because negative 1 times x is negative x. And negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. OK, so now when I simplify this, Negative one absolute value is simply one times, I'm still going to show all this, the absolute value of x minus three plus one. So that's the identity. So since we're multiplying by one, nothing changes. So we don't really need to show it. So it's just going to be x minus three absolute value plus one. So now let's graph these. And I already have the parent function in Desmos, and then I'll put this. So now it's the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 1. So now if I go here and say h of x equals the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 1, then it does, in fact, reflect my original function f of x, which is red, across the y-axis and ends up over here. Okay. Okay, example three, writing stretches and shrinks of functions. Okay, so that means it's getting a stretch would mean it gets larger or smaller in the negative direction quicker. And a shrink means it gets larger or smaller in the y direction up, down, slower, therefore, it, a shrink is really a widening and a stretch is a narrowing, okay?
And what is actually happening there, let me go to Desmos to explain this. So let's read the example first. Let f of x equal the absolute value of x minus 3 minus 5. So this is shifted right 3 and down 5 from the origin. That's where the v, the two uh, portions of the graph meet. Write a, a function g, whose graph is a horizontal shrink. So let me highlight this. Okay, a horizontal shrink of the graph of f by a factor of a third. So we're shrinking f by a third. Now think about that. If we go to the graph, and let's just say I had a point right here at two. So let me just plot that. So if I had the point two comma zero, that's right here. Okay, or how about two one, so it's not on the x-axis. So if I have this point right here, and I shrink this by a factor of a third, I'm pulling the function down closer to the x-axis. Shrinks, think of it as squeezing it down to the x-axis, stretches, pull it away from the x-axis. Well, if I shrink this down by a factor of one third, that would get me a third of one, which would be one third. And I wouldn't get to the value of one until I went out two thirds, three thirds. So if I then said, okay, well now it is at the point two comma three, I'm sorry, not two, um, multiplying it by three, six comma one, okay? So if I drew a line from here through here, like an absolute value function, and then shrunk it by a third, it wouldn't get to two until I was at six, triple. It takes triple the time because we're squeezing it down. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, so that's what we have to do. We have to multiply it by three to shrink it a third. So it's just the reciprocal of what you're factoring it, of the, of the um, scale factor. All right, so if I go back to my pen, let's use blues because I highlighted it and write a function g. So part a is going to be g of x. It's going to equal, and what I want to do is multiply f of x by three inside. Okay, so one third times three is one. That's a way of thinking about it. How do I get the identity? What's the inverse of a third? three. So now I'm taking g of x and it's going to equal f of three times x. Okay, so now I'm going to do my substitution. So since f of x equals this, f of 3x is going to equal three times that x inside. So it's going to equal the absolute value of 3x minus 3 plus 5. Oh, it's minus five. Okay. So I'm looking around here and I'm like, wait, that doesn't sound right. So it's minus five. There is a minus here, minus five. So G of X equals the absolute value of three X minus three minus five. So let's graph the parent function X minus three absolute value minus five. So let's get rid of these. And what was the name of the original function? I want to name it properly. It is f of x equals x minus 3 minus 5. So f of x equals absolute value x minus 3 minus 5. All right, let me zoom out so we can see it. So remember what I said, the inside means move it to the right 3 and then down 5. So the original would have been at the origin 0, 0, and I went over 1, 2, 3. Right three is a minus three inside, down five is a minus five outside, putting our vertex at three comma negative five instead of zero, zero. So there is f of x. Now I wanna plot g of x. So g of x is going to equal our absolute value of three x minus three minus five. Okay. So what I was saying was it's going to get stretched.
Okay, let me rephrase that. It's not going to get stretched. It's going to get squeezed because it was one third. Between zero and one, you're going to squeeze it. Greater than one, it's going to stretch it out. Okay, stretch it this way, if you will. Um, so one third will make it do this. Where the parent function was here. All right, next step. B. Change colors to purple. B. Highlighter. Purple. A function H, whose graph is a vertical stretch of the graph of F by a factor of two. Okay, so now that's greater than one. So we're going to multiply this by two outside since it's greater than one. So if I go back to my pen and I'm going to write h of x equals two times f of x. Actually, I don't want to print these there. It's just two f of x. Okay, so if we're going to factor it by a number greater than one, it goes out in front. If we factor it by a value between zero and one, we take its inverse and put it inside in front of the variable. That's the rule, okay? So h of x equals two times f of x. Substitute in my givens. h of x is now going to equal two times this. So it's gonna be two times the absolute value of x minus three minus five, okay? And then I need to distribute that. So I'm gonna multiply two times this absolute value. So h of x is going to equal two times the absolute value of x minus three, and then distribute the two times this, and that's going to become minus 10. So I get the function h of x equals two times the quantity x minus three, absolute value minus 10. So now let's see how that looks in Desmos and check it. Two X minus three minus 10. H X equals two absolute value X minus three outside minus 10. And when I zoom out, we can see all three functions. So the green is the original function F of X. The purple one is a, is a one-third factor of one-third, and the black one is a factor of two, okay? So a shrink and a stretch. Okay, example four, we're going to combine transformation. So now we have, let me get my highlighter. Let the graph of G be a vertical shrink by a factor of 0.25, followed by a translation three units up, okay? Translation three units up of the graph of f of x equals x. And they want us to write a rule for g. So we're gonna do this in two steps. So rather than just saying let g of x equal right away, let's just use a different variable h. And we're gonna start off with h of x. We're going to do one step at a time. And let's do the vertical shrink right here as our h. So h of x is a vertical shrink, which is 0 0.25 times f of x. So there's our formula. A vertical shrink is multiplying the whole thing by the factor. So simplifying this, we get h of x equals, and now I'm going to write 0 0.25, and f of x equals x, so I'm going to substitute in. So since f of x equals x, I can just say f of x is now just simply x. So there's our first step. We did, we created a function called h of x that dealt with the vertical shrink. Now we're going to switch to our g of x and we're going to translate it three units up, and we're going to translate h of x up three units. So g of x is going to equal h of x, and translating three units up is the constant outside h of x 
plus k, and my k is 3. So g of x is going to equal h of x plus 3. Well, h of x is 0.25x. So now we're going to substitute, and we're going to say 0, I forgot my equal sign, 0.25x plus 3. So g of x is going to be a vertical shrink of a quarter plus a translation three units up three. Okay, so now let's check that by graphing it. So I'm going to graph the original function f of x equals x. So I go to Desmos and I'm just going to say f of x equals x. Okay, so it's the parent function linear going through the origin with a slope of one. Okay. And then we're going to say g of x equals 0.25x plus 3. Okay? So a vertical shrink tilts it down. It, think of it as pulling it towards the x-axis. That's the blue line. It's getting the, the slope is less. And the shift up three translate it, translates it three units up. So if I look at the origin and I go up one, two, three, we're at the point zero, three instead of zero, zero. So that's a shift up three units and the slope went from one to one fourth. So from here, I went up one over one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's the combining transformations. Okay, example five is modeling with mathematics. So now we're going to do a real world function, real world scenario here. You say you own a company and you design computer games. Your revenue for X downloads, let me get my highlighter out. Your revenue for X downloads is given by F of X equals 2X. Okay, that's your revenue for a certain number of downloads. So if it's one download, you make $2. If it's 10 downloads, you make... $20 and so on and so on and so on. So you're, this tells you you're making $2 per download. Your profit is $50. Now there's going to be changes. So this is your gross, if you will. And then there's expenses. Your profit, how much you make is $50 less than 90% of the revenue for X downloads. Describe how to transform the graph of F to the model to model the profit. And what will your profit for 100 downloads be? So there's two steps here. We've got to find a formula in general, and then we're going to substitute 100 in to that new formula. That's what this question is asking. Okay, so before I even get started, I'm going to graph f of x equals 2x. That's how much we make per download. That's the revenue. So let's graph the revenue, and we'll call that r of x. Since it's revenue, I'll use r of x. The book says f of x, but I'm going to use r of x for revenue. So r of x equals 2x. Oh, whoops, arrow out of there, equals 2x, okay? So what this means is if I make zero downloads, it's going to cost, make, I'm going to make zero dollars. One download, one download, let me get up here, one download is two dollars. Two downloads, four dollars, and so on, and so on, and so on. So this is a linear function. I'll zoom out to say ten, or even further. Okay. I think they said a hundred. So let me go out to one hundred. We're not going to ever have negatives, so I can go to the first quadrant. Does that make sense? We're not going to do negative downloads. It's impossible. Either it's zero or it's positive. So we're going to be in the first quadrant for this problem. So those are things you want to think about when you're graphing things. All right. So now let's go back to the problem. Okay, so we have a function f of x equals 2x. Your profit is $50 less than 90%. So for starters, we have to remember that 90% as a decimal is 0 0.9. Okay, and we're going to call this profit, your profit. So let's use p of x. So we're trying to find our profit, which would be p of x. And p of x equals 90% of f of x, and then if we continue reading it, 
it says your profit is $50 less than 90% of that function. So now I'm going to say minus 50. So there's my function in function notation. P of X equals 90% of F of X and then $50 less than that, subtracting 50 from that. Okay, so this is going to translate 50 units down. And this is going to be a vertical shrink because it's less than one. So I'm going to simplify now. And we're going to get P of X equals 0 0.9. And in place of F of X, I'm going to substitute in what F of X equals, which is 2X. So it's going to be 2X here, minus 50. Well, when I simplify that, I'm going to multiply 0.9 times 2X, which is 1.8X minus 50. Okay. And there's our equation, P of X equals 1.8 X minus 50. And then I'll go to Desmos and write that in here. So P of X, our profit equals 1.8 X minus 50. Okay, so we're talking profit here. So you're not gonna profit anything if we have zero downloads. But now before, if I had 20 downloads or 10 downloads, I'd make $20. But after profit 10 downloads is going to be negative. I'm not making any money yet. It's down here, okay? That 10 is now down here. So we, to be realistic now, we can't go any lower than, we can't have a negative profit. So there it is, 27.778 to be exact. We can't have a fraction of downloads. So in reality, we want to go to 28. Okay, so 28, I can't click on it. There we go, it's starting to, there it is, 28 downloads will make 40 cents and so on and so on. So now what the question is asking is, what is your profit for 100 downloads? So that means we're going to take our function that we created here and X is 100. Number of downloads is X, your revenue for X downloads. So now instead of writing P of X, I'm gonna say P of 100 equals 1.8 and substitute everywhere you see that X, you're going to put 100 in. So P of 100, okay, profit for 100 downloads is what that means. 1.8 times 100 is 180 minus 50. And so therefore the profit for 100 downloads is going to be $130. So if I check that in Desmos, if I go out to 100, where am I on that blue line? It is right here. And sure enough, if I get it just right, 100 comma 130. 100 downloads profits me $130. And that's the answer to that we got algebraically and graphically. Okay, that's the end of chapter 1.2. Please go do the exercises. And this might be a little confusing to you. So come to class with questions. Have a good day.